Now if Arkansas, so to, to speak to y'all and I, North Georgia, so give her a round of applause for just making the trip. Right? She, uh, she's the CEO and owner of PlaggingBetter.com, uh, Brave Magazine. She does an up, up in Your Business weekly radio show, a podcast, and she saved a historical building um, and now is, is uh, restored the Dreamland Ballroom. So I'll turn the stage over to Terry uh, McCoy, and thank you for being with us tonight. Thanks for the podium. Is this my microphone or this my microphone? No, 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 this one? Yeah, this one? It might be a little high. Can y'all hear me? There. Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. Wow, that was really nice, Mr. Kreider. Thank you very much. I could almost see the amber waves of grain during, those one, during that one song. That was nice. So, um, hello, future farmers of America. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And when I found out that I was coming, or really before I accepted Mr. Green's invitation, I called my son, Jack McCoy who is earning his PhD, I better get this right, he is earning his PhD in horticulture at the Ohio State, and I asked him what he knew about FFA students. He was very complimentary. Hey, can, I, can I bother you for just a second? Sure. I forgot to do something. What? I had a treat for you, and I got so tied up in the patriotic medley, I oh, forgot. Oh, lovely. I, okay, everybody, when they come through the door tonight, had, was given something. Can, can y'all oh. wave it real high for her? <laughs> Thank oh, those, you. those are your flags. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Thank you very much. So um, that was fun. Thanks. Um, so I called up my son, Jack McCoy, and I asked him about Future Farmers of America, and he was very complimentary, and he invited himself along. So stand up, Jack, so you can wave at everybody. <laughs> As I said, he's getting his PhD in horticulture and he's uh, researching um, drought tolerance for chili peppers. How specific is that? If you'd like to talk to him, he'll be around. We have a table over there. Um, also in preparation, I enjoyed learning about the, nat the National Future Farmers of America and, founded, and it was founded in 1928 and that Georgia's FFA is the third largest in the country with 347 chapters and more than 43,000 members and 475 agri teachers at last count. Congratulations, Georgia. I see that many of you in the room are alumni and uh, are alumni of FFA and are already understand the importance of leadership. But I'm here today to really address the future farmers of America. The nation's Future Farmers of America is a big title with a big mission on its website to create the agri leaders of America, and that's a big calling. If you break it down, I believe it means you're charged with feeding and nurturing future generations, and that our planet's health, our personal lifestyles, and the longevity and quality of our individual lives are in your hands, the future farmers of America. That's a lot of responsibility. Are you ready for that? Some of you may not think so. So I'm here to tell you, you students, practicing as a future farmer, that you are. I stand before you an average person with one year of college education who through hard work, tenacity, and optimism has surpassed my high school education to become successful in all of my life. And I have lived the American dream, as I'm sure many of you have. I love young people. I was excited when I heard I was going to be talking to a group of high schoolers. I have a lot of, express, I have a lot of respect for the youth of America. I can still remember the pressures and the certainties of uncertainties of growing up. It's the getting started that's hard, and that's where students are today. So far in my life, I've started a radio show and a podcast, as Mike said, a small business, Arkansas Flag and Banner, a magazine, a nonprofit, several websites, a family, a home, and I've rescued an abandoned historical building from the wrecking ball but it was the starting of my adult 
life that was the scariest and possibly the hardest. To help ease students into this transition, I have come to share my learned wisdom. Being students, which there's not a lot of, I was gonna say you might wanna take notes, one of my learned wisdoms is, if I hear something inspiring, I like to write it down. I used to stick them on my fridge till I got too many. Now they go in a folder, alongside thank you notes that I've received. And when I need inspiration and encouragement, which we all do from time to time, I pull out the folder and I thumb through them. Today you'll hear many of these saved adages in my talk. Let's get started. These are the leadership qualities as defined by me, Carrie McCoy. You've heard it said, and I quote from the famous coach, this was in my folder, Coach Vince Lombardi said, leaders aren't born, they're made. Leaders often develop out of ambition, and that ambition often comes from lack. Lack, of a, lack is a great motivator. Lack of money, lack of confidence, lack of time. These are all mothers of creation. Leadership qualities are not a secret. Good leaders are usually honest, brave, optimistic, action-oriented, hardworking, and good communicators with a bent toward empathy and open-mindedness. Did you notice the omission of smart? That's because it's too broad. There's book smart, there's street smart, there's people smart, there's creative smart, there's emotional smart. There's artistic smart, and the list is, in, it goes on and on. You may not know what it is yet, but every one of you has some type of innate smarts. And you will spend your whole life using it, refining it, and seeking its purpose. The seven leadership qualities I mentioned are simply tools for you to hone in your innate smarts development. Let's talk about each one. Honesty. It's a good example of something that can be taught and learned at an early age by words and examples from your parents, your teachers, and mentors. You can easily have this one just by being honest. But as you grow into adulthood, expand your thinking of honesty. Yes, it's doing the right thing, but it also can be the honesty in which you present yourself to the world. Or are you pretending? In my day, there weren't as many archetypes in social groups as there are now. You were either a good student or a bad student. You were either a football player or a nerd, a cheerleader or in the band, and there was very little in between. As with all teenagers and many adults, I struggled to find my place and to fit in. It wasn't until I was older that I realized all humans, young and old, sometimes feel misunderstood. Here's the good news. The very things that make us different are the qualities that set us apart in a good way. And that being set apart often equates to being a leader of some type. Look at those differences as your innate smarts. Embrace them. And that's worth saying again. The things that make us different, that set us apart, are our gifts. Being your honest self does not mean fake it till you make it is wrong. On the contrary, pushing ourselves is how we grow. But are you doing it with authenticity? Please know that you are made perfectly for your life. No one else's life, just yours and that by honestly and openly accepting all parts of yourself, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, and everything in between, that you will find your niche and have a purpose-driven life. I can think of no better current example of this than Lizzo, who last month won three Grammys. Anybody know who Lizzo is? Yeah. I was supposed to be talking to students. They would have known who Lizzo was. <laughs> this brings me to leadership quality number two, learn to be brave. The first leadership quality of being honest and true to oneself can only happen 
if you're brave enough to discover who you are. This is when you dig deep. Right now, as you sit in your chair, or maybe when you walk down the hall, or lie in bed thinking, what do you dream about doing? Even today, I still dream about doing things. What do you dream about becoming? Even today, I'm reinventing myself. Be honest. Don't be embarrassed to be bold. Dream big, really, really big. And if you know what it is, write it down. Send yourself an email. For me as a young lady lying in bed, I dreamed of living in New York City and having a successful career as a fashion model. I can still remember the apartment I decorated and redecorated secretly in my mind. See in my mind's eyes the clothes I dreamt of wearing as I walked around my high fashion apartment. I took this out, but I'm putting it back in. Think Mary Tyler Moore show. When I said that to my younger group, they went, who's that? <laughs> because of the daydreaming goal of having an apartment in New York City, I was motivated to get out of my comfort zone. I ambitiously and fearfully left home and attended a one-year fashion and merchandising college in Dallas, Texas. After graduation, and for several reasons, that career did not work out. I thought my daydreaming had been in vain. I felt disheartened, and I took what I thought at the time a measly job of selling flags door to door, business to business. With fear in my stomach, I'm 20 years old. I knocked on doors and I learned to cold call on business owners and sell them flags. Again, that career didn't work out. Dejected, I moved home and out of necessity began to sell flags out of the trunk of my car in my hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. What seemed like a setback was really a setup for bigger things. Through all of that, I learned independence from living in a big city, confidence in my solo decision making, and how to shake hands and cold call on strangers and talk on the phone for business, which is harder than you may think. Don't think by any stretch of the imagination I was good. I was just average at best. I was very young, I was 20. You don't have to have all the answers, so don't pretend like you do. All you have to have is bravery to try new things. Let your daydreaming lead you. Be open to redirection. The road is almost never straight. What seems like a door closing might just be another door opening, prepare, preparing you for what lay ahead. Your destiny, which could be feeding the world, which is for many of you, saving the planet, uh, enacting new agri legislation, which I think someone in the room has already done. In, sight, when you're my, in hindsight, when you're my age, you may look back, reflect, and in the words of Garth Brooks' song, thank God for unanswered prayers. And not just in your career, but maybe in your love life too. Success comes from mastering your discomfort. Learn to process failure in order to take big and bold steps. You don't have to be the best. Doesn't that take a lot of pressure off? You just must be trying with authenticity. As the person in charge of hiring at my company, I absolutely love to see young people and people trying new things. You may be an expert at high school, but when you leave here, you start over again. Own it. I'm young, I'm ambitious, I'm learning, I'm trying. This is how you win respect. Grow and find a mentor or a job to help you along the way. Don't underestimate the power of vulnerability. It's charming. Start practicing now at being consciously brave and honestly owning your own youthful naivety. Optimism. The third leadership quality is optimism. You can't be brave without it. The op it takes optimism to give the firefighters the courage to run into a burning building, ace pilots to fly off for war, students to enroll in college. It's optimism that gives you the strength to push for progress in all parts of your life. The very definition of a leader is someone always striving for improvement in themselves, in their surroundings, and in helping and improving others. 
How could you possibly take risks and try new things without optimism? My mother used to say about me, Carrie, you jump off buildings and build your wings on the way down. Now that's optimism. You may think, but that's not me, I don't have that, and that's okay. Everybody's level of risk is different. Again, I say, we are all made perfectly for the life we are meant to lead. As humans, no one, and I mean no one, is exempt from the needling voice of self-doubt. This character flaw is universal in the human species and something you don't outgrow. Instead, you learn to manage it. For lack of a better description, I call this voice of condemnation devil speak. Because if repeated over and over in one's head, it will map a really nasty little devilish neuron pattern in your brain, and that is true. That's right, it'll make a little road map in your brain, stealing your joy. Let's try to reset. Let's reset our GPS. Give this nagging devil persona voice a name and talk back to it. I call it Bob. I mean, if it's going to have a conversation with you, you might as well have one back. You can say things like, Bob, go away. I know you're not real. Or call him out and say, Bob, I know you don't speak the truth. Stop lying to me. Or my favorite, Bob, I'm not listening. And this really works. And then consciously and deliberately think of something else. Turn down the volume on guilt, anger, and fear. Give yourself a pep talk. You must learn to buoy yourself. Positive affirmations first thing in the morning while looking in the mirror or alone while driving in your car really work. Say to yourself, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm handsome, I'm loved, I'm successful. The list is endless. And don't stop there. Learn more self-help tricks like this one. Believe it or not, making your bed every morning has been proven to change your life for the better. Oprah professes to do it, and the military requires it. Think about it. If you make your bed first thing in the morning before you leave your bedroom, you've already had an accomplishment for the day. And when you come home and see it, well, that's just icing on the cake. Find a self-help book you like and read it over and over again. Because I'm not a big reader. I watch a lot of documentaries and I listen to interviews. When watching Oprah's Super Soul Sunday, I'll have a pen and paper ready to write down inspirational tips and slogans that go into my folder and self-help self books that I may listen to before falling asleep. Like most worthwhile things, to stay upbeat and positive takes effort. We all want to bet on a winning horse. And can a winning horse ever win without thinking he can? Leadership quality number four, as I said in the beginning, they are not secrets at all. Successful people take action. Too many of us come out of the gate fast, ready to take action, then go, then give up at the first sign of trouble. Change the way you think of these challenges. Solving problems is the creative part of business. And solving problems in groups is leadership. How many times have you been in a meeting or a group and someone says, let's call or email so-and-so, and then someone else writes it down to do later? Why not call or email them right then in the meeting? It's simple, yet rarely done. Today's business is fast. There is no time to write down action items for tomorrow that can be done today. For those later action items, to-do lists and calendar events are a must. But if you find again and again that you're moving items on your to-do list, then you need to ask yourself why. It can only be one of three things. The task is impossible, in which case you need to come to terms, take it off your list, and notify the appropriate person. Number two, you don't understand. And you need to ask for help. Do it. And if necessary, make an event call Ask for help on your calendar. And three, you're procrastinating. And if you're procrastinating, it may be because you're not busy enough. Stay with me. Dale Carnegie, who wrote the famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, said, if you want to get something done, 
give it to a busy person. This seems counterintuitive, but follow me. If there is not a sense of urgency, it is human nature to put things off. The bottom line is a busy person doesn't have the time or the luxury to, pro to procrastinate. Be in the business of creating possibilities for greatness in your life. Why settle when with a little more action and effort, the outcome can be great? Let's recap. So far today, we've built you up to be an honest, optimistic person who is brave enough to take action. All that is left for future farmers of America to lead the world is hard work, good communication skills, and open-mindedness. Warren Buffett, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and the fourth richest man in the world, while giving a speech to a group of college students, was asked, how do you recommend getting a job after college? His answer to the student was not what you might think. Buffett said, and I'm paraphrasing, don't work for money, work at what you want to do. Find a company or a place that that, or a place you would like to work that aligns with your ideals, goals, and lifestyle. Apply for a job at the said company and take any job they offer you, even if it's as the janitor. Then work hard. Ask for promotions and move up the ranks. This is not the answer the young man was looking for. After all, he had a college degree from an Ivy League school. But keep in mind, the student has little, if any, work experience. And as most people in this room know, experience is non-transferable. It takes time to attain. Like many of the successful guests I interview on my radio show, Up In Your Business with Kerry McCoy, they understood and accepted this concept. And because of their work ethic, held many second jobs. As an example of this, for nine years while I grew my company, Arkansas Flag and Banner, I moonlighted as a waitress to some, this may seem discouraging, but this, my friends, is where I met the cute busboy who would later become my husband and coworker over the past 40 years. Raise your hand, honey. <laughs> so again, what some might think is a setback could be a setup for greater things. Use the leadership quality number three, optimism, to embrace all parts of your life. The path is almost never straight, and that's not a bad thing. Listen and go where life leads you. Say yes before saying no. And these ups and downs and sideways teach us how to embrace change, which is how we stay relevant and successful. As the 42nd President Bill Clinton said, the price of doing the same old thing is far higher than the price of change. Communication. The last leadership quality that I'm going to discuss today is communication. Socializing with others helps us to hone our communication skills. Unless you're a computer programmer or an analyst whose work is in their home, being alone limits opportunities and experiences that might only occur through social interaction. Experiential knowledge of others grows our empathy and open-mindedness. You will find many successful people learned empathy through the School of Hard Knocks. Before they walked, before they walked the walk of owner or manager, before they talked the talk of owner or manager, they walked the walk of the employee. They grew their emotional intelligence and learned what a, good le what a good leader looks and sounds like. In the 90s, author Daniel Goleman wrote a groundbreaking book titled Emotional Intelligence. In keeping with the IQ, intelligence quotient, format, Mr. Goleman named his newfound skill your EQ, emotional quotient. Prior to his discovery, most emphasis for a successful career had been on higher education. But Mr. Goldman found it was the people with the high EQ 
that usually led a team of people with high IQs. So how do you define emotional intelligence? Said by Mr. Goldman, its biggest determiner is the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes. Empathy and understanding. Listening with authenticity is the most powerful communication skill you have. As Greek philosopher Diogenes wrote, we have two ears and one tongue so that we may listen more. Learning to listen to the people around you substantially ups your EQ. This diversity in thought will grow your team, build loyalty, and increase success. Stay open-minded. Build on what you hear. How do winning college coaches with new recruits win year after year? They know how to communicate. They build a team of individual respect for each other, and together they work for a common good. As you go forward, be brave. To do anything for the first time is hard and can be a little scary. But since your birth, you've had many firsts. From learning to crawl, to driving a car, and now to becoming a contributing adult to our society. It is through your next brave steps that you will seek and find your innate purpose. I believe we're all born with a gift and that this gift is uniquely yours. Like a magnet, our destination is drawn. Your place at the table of life is guaranteed no matter what. With honesty, you'll become acquainted with your truth. All the universe is attracted to goodness, so be good. Through bravery, you'll have the courage to keep pursuing your best self. Learn how to be comfortable and process failure in order to take bold and big steps. Not everything will work out, but remember setbacks are often setups for success. Have optimism. Nobody wants to follow a pessimist. They're going the wrong way. Don't let a spirit of discouragement, that self-defeating voice, keep you from your dreams. Take action. Go to the mountaintop with your dream, the one you wrote down, the one you thought about when I mentioned it then jump off. Work hard. Your life is an autocracy governed by one person with absolute power. You. So why settle? When with a little more work and right actions, you can live the life you so desire. A life of purpose and abundance. Develop your communication skills with empathy and open-mindedness. Expose yourself to others. Be a good listener. It's how you learn. In the words of the Dalai Lama, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. And last, our state, our country, our planet's most important natural resource isn't food or water or soil, it's you. You matter. As I said in the beginning, the Future Farmers of America is a big title with a big mission to create the future agri-leaders of America and that our planet's health, our personal lifestyles, and the longevity and quality of our individual lives are in your hands. You are more than a farmer. You are a dealer in hope. So stay strong, be brave, and keep it up. Thank you all for inviting me. All right, wave those flags one more time. One more time for Carrie McCoy. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. <laughs>